you know why you're here. The Uniformation GK3 Ultra Resin Printer. Is it any good for your home shop? Well, it probably depends on your needs. For me, it's a big yes. But let's talk about why. I was really interested in trying this out because as I've mentioned before, the Uniformation GK2 was my favorite resin printer. Just all around. Granted, I haven't tried all of them and I don't get super technical with the machines, but I would have been happy to snap my fingers and turn all of my resin printers into GK2s. Well, the GK3 Ultra is kind of like a GK2 with a couple extra features and a whole lot more size. It's bigger. The GK3 Ultra has a 13 and a half inch screen. Uh, that's off from the GK2's, I think, 10.3 inch. The build plate is massive in comparison. We're talking the build volume is like nearly a foot wide, nearly a foot tall, more than six inches deep. It's huge. I have found two massive advantages for this massive size. Uh, first off, you can print a lot more stuff on it. The important part here is the way area scales. So let's say you have a rectangle and it has a certain area to it. If you double the length of the size of the rectangle, the area doesn't double. It squares, it quadruples. Let's use like a real world example. So I got a seven inch printer over here and I tried to, in a slicer, I took some little zombie gaming guides and saw how many I could cram on that plate. I came up with 19. I could get 19 little dudes on that seven inch plate. Now, same thing on the GK3 Ultra, I fit 76 little dudes. Now, I'm not great at the whole math numbers thing, but 13.5 is less than double what seven is. And yet I can fit four times as many little dudes on there. And some of those 76 weren't the same. They were bigger. They were like the special units. But let's say you're not, let's say you don't care about nerdy games, okay? Uh, a lot of things, a lot of times when you download a file or you, you get something that you're going to print, you'll notice it's chopped into a bunch of pieces, especially if it's big. That's because uh, most people have smaller printers. I think a lot of people chop up the models to fit either on a, a seven, or like a six and a half, seven, or maybe a 10 inch printer if it's a really big thing. Uh, and, and you end up having to print multiple plates to get to get the thing and then put it all together. This thing, I can take some of those files that are designed to be printed in four or five goes and print enough on one build plate to build almost two of them. That's super handy because this printer is not very quick. It's just as slow per level as the GK2. A lot of companies are coming out with faster printers these days. I've said repeatedly, I don't really care how fast it is. Uh, but bigger is nicer, and the bigger actually compensates a bit for not being as fast. You know, if you can print four times as many things at once, who cares if it's not double the speed? Then there's the other end of the spectrum, the single huge things. These are things that can only be printed on a bigger printer. Remember that respirator face mask thing I was designing and printing in the GK2 that was like scanned to my face and had like hoses for remote filters and all that? Uh, well, I didn't forget about that project. I ran into a problem. See, my face is kind of like big and long and like horsey nose and all that. You can't get scale on a camera, but trust me, I'm, I'm, I am I'm look weird in real life. Well, I didn't forget about that project. I ran into a problem uh, that the old 10 inch printer, the, the thing was, it was just half an inch too small. It was just too small to get the thing to fit my face right. Well, now I got a whole extra three inches to play with. No one cut that out of context. Now I'm prototyping a full face mask. I think in my whole head, it looks kind of like a Halloween costume. I'm still working on it. My 3D modeling skills are, are lagging, but I could, I could probably fit two of these on there at once. Check it out. Does it look weird? Work in progress. Stay tuned. It'll, I'll, I'll do it eventually. I'll, don't rush me. I do have some much cooler ideas now that I don't have to try to fit it on a small screen. That's gonna be, that's gonna be a huge help. Okay, back to the super nerd stuff. This is a tiny gaming figure robot dude. And here's a tiny robot at 690% scale. It's huge. This is the kind of scale you can get when using a gigantic printer. Although to be fair, I did have to cut the top off the thing, print it separately, and then glue it back on. You know, that spear is, is it even all in shot? It's, it is, it is gigantic. I really just did this kind of because I can, you know? I also did another one for my wife. This is like a space nun with a gun and a map, and a sword for some reason. It's for a game. Yes, okay, I'm a nerd. No problem with the ladies though. I managed to snag a wife. I didn't tell her I was a nerd. Just kidding, it was super obvious. The size has two downsides that you might run into if you get one of these things. The first uh, has no solution, the second does. The big problem is uh, it's big, and that's a problem. Keeping this thing somewhere is gonna be an ordeal. It, it is gigantic. It's hard to tell scale on a camera, but trust me, 
I don't have anywhere to put this thing and it's super heavy. So moving it around is not gonna be great for my spine. This also means there's like extra equipment that goes with this. I have a cure station, which I'm gonna recommend you probably get because how else are you gonna cure things that are too big for any other cure station? You'd have to put them outside in the sun. Like that's the only option you got. There's a wash station that's also huge. That's super cool, but it takes up more space than the printer. Big is cool, but like until someone invents real life TARDIS technology, like we're gonna have to worry about space, right? Second problem, there is a solution. Back to Mr. Gigantic Robot. This thing's hollow, but it takes, it still took a lot of resin. How much resin can you fit in a vat? It's, it's not, not a lot. You ever like set a print up and then you came back later and realized it ran out of resin like 80% of the way through and now it's all ruined? Me too. Mr. Gigantic Robot didn't have that problem though. Uh, these vats hold quite a lot of resin, though not as much as you might think. It doesn't hold four times as much resin, but they managed to prevent the whole resin running out problem by having a resin level sensor. That's a sensor, you can see it on the vat, and a pump with like a bottle that you can stick up there. Here's one of the bottles on the bottom. There's a couple of things, there's a couple little holes. You just slide it in the top of the printer and use air pressure to push resin out of here. Before I use the thing, I take this out and I shake it and stick it back in. I believe they're gonna be selling their resin in these bottles, which is cool, but you don't have to use their resin. Like you can, I, I loaded some of this up with some Sunlu ABS like, and it works just fine. You can like put a bunch in the vat and then put a bunch in the bottle. And that bottle takes more than one kilogram resin. It's like 1200 grams. So you can have more than a full bottle in reserve and a full vat. You probably won't run out of resin. I would recommend though, pour some resin in the vat. Don't expect the pump thing to, to do it because it takes, forever to fill an empty vat. I tried. I kinda wish the old GK2 had that system because I have had it run out of resin partway through because the vats do not hold a full kilogram. Speaking of features I wish I had before now, this has this really cool thing where you can take the build plate off and hang it off to the side and let all of the extra resin drip straight back into the vat. It's a great idea. I wish every other printer on earth had this, had this setup. And yes, it is big enough for gigantic Mr. Robot Man. This also has one of my favorite things that the GK2 has, and that's an extended vat. You can see the vat kind of sticks way out. It's much bigger than you would expect it to be. When you take the build plate out, there's always like drips, and this has a vat that sticks way out, and the drips fall in there. No problem. Other printers I have solve this problem by catching the drips with the touchscreen, which is not cool, because now I got resin all over the touchscreen, and it's annoying to clean it off, and those little touchpad things really don't like having alcohol wiped on them. It's, it's not good. Oh, wait. I have a gigantic printer now. Maybe I can fix that. Hey, would you look at that? You can indeed fix that. Printers are cool. Yeah, the screen on this thing is so big, it's bigger than some of the vats on the other printers, which is crazy to think about. I did have a problem with this and giant robot thing and space none. It doesn't look that big in my hand, but this did not easily fit in a five gallon bucket full of alcohol. How do you clean off the resin? Uniformation has like a wash system. I don't have one here. Man, big prints. Big prints need a big wash thing. And this, this is wider than a five gallon bucket. And and like this, that that ain't fitting in a five gallon bucket. It's it's too is too big and tall. I, I got it. I got it worked out. I'm just saying. Extra big stuff comes with some extra unanticipated problems. One problem you might be anticipating, larger printers generally have worse resolution. If you get a bigger printer, like 10 inch printers are generally pretty good resolution. 12 inch printers generally a little worse. There are some 15, 16 inch printers that are even worse. That said, resolution on all of these is probably good enough you don't have to worry about it. It's really into the realm of marketing, right? You might know we're, we're dealing with the size of the pixels that put out the light that cure the resin. The smaller the pixels, the better the resolution. Okay, if the pixel is any smaller than like 30, 35 microns, you're gonna have a hard time telling the difference with your naked eye except in very specific situations. The GK2, 29 and a half micron pixels, okay? About 30 microns. Uh, you know what else is 30 microns? I had to look this up. Uh, liver cells are about there. Uh, neurons are around there, and I'm not talking like the long spindly tail part, I'm talking like the cell body. Like, can you eyeball the difference between a neuron bot cell body and a liver cell? I can't, it's too small. That said, some of the bigger printers out there have uh, don't have 30 micron pixels, they have 40 something or even 50 something micron pixels. And that might be pushing into the realm where you can actually tell the difference with your naked eye. Don't have to worry about it with this one because the pixels on this, the resolution is actually better than the GK2. 
They're rectangular pixels and one of the dimensions is longer than the other, but I think the longest dimension is 26 microns. The point is, you get a bigger printer and the resolution is better. There's like no downside there. You're not losing out. Especially for me, I'm probably gonna be using it for like big stuff, so super fine detail doesn't matter so much, but it's there if I need it. That'll definitely come in handy if I ever break out my, uh, my can of like true blue uh, casting resin for like big sculptures. Well, now I can print big sculptures. I mean, how's this for big? It also has my favorite feature from the GK2 and that's a resin vat heater. It heats up from the bottom or something using witchcraft, I imagine, or engineering, I don't know. And I'm pretty sure this is why I've had such good luck printing difficult metal casting resins with the GK2. The GK3 has the same feature. So to reiterate, it's huge and the prints look good, but it takes up a ton of space and it isn't any faster than the old one. Does this take the place of the GK2 in my uh, magical snap my fingers and replace all my printers? Would I snap my fingers and replace all of my resin printers with GK3 Ultras? Uh, If I had space for all of them, yeah. The only other downside I can think of is the price. This thing is gigantic and it's pretty nice and it can do a lot of stuff. So of course it's gonna be kind of expensive. Uh, but right now, as of publishing the video, if you watch it within the first couple weeks after, and most of you will, there's a coupon code down below for hundred bucks off. It's good to the end of September. Uh, you can go ahead and get one of these on that coupon. I would appreciate it. So check that out and uh, stick around and see what else I do with this gigantic thing. I just got a box of some cool resins to play with. We're gonna make some cool stuff.